Hi, the Brian clan. Hi, what's from Nate? Okay, I'm going to go live regular in just a few minutes, but I wanted to, um, I was trying to finish all day with what I started because I was having such a time last night. So I figured, and nobody could see what I was making. Everybody was asking, and I don't know what's with that light. So I'm going to show you before we go live so you can see. So this was the, the Be Kind tray that I made. And let's see, what else was I working on last night? Oh, this is my first project last night, was the um, pineapple vase. Hi, Crystal, Hi, Sakura. And then you know that I had this side of this done a long time ago. I finished this side. Okay, and then I made this. This was just a little uh, decoupage box. So I have to paint the inside of the top. That's the only thing that's not finished. It's gold inside. And I put some glitter in the uh, roses there. Okay. And this is the other decoupage box. It has a little butterfly. Oh, there's the little butterfly with glitter. Hi, Steve. How are you? This one's painted inside all the way. Hi, Jeanette. Okay, this is this is probably one of my favorites. And so I had I painted around it with uh, you know to make it look like a painting, and I put uh, gold around the canvas there. It's like a little it's a mini little canvas, and I used glitter too. Yeah, I like that one a lot. And okay, what else did I do? I did this little, I think, it's funny because watch this, this almost, this fits exactly as if it was a top on there, like, it's really weird, very weird, it doesn't go together anyway, but it's just weird, okay, and then I did a little bunny, and, oh, I did, the, this one I was working on last night, but I put glitter on it on the flowers and let's see what else had to make oh I made these uh, Beatrix Potter ones hi Carol hi Panda Evie. that one and I've got this one These are paper mache eggs. Hi, Donna. Hi, Janelle. Hi, Deborah. Lots of glitter. Hi, Tina. And then this one doesn't have any glitter. It's a little bunny. Hi, Karen. And this has a lot of flowers on the back and the bunny on the front. Hi, two scooter. And uh, let's see, which is the last thing of oh, this one. So, you like the gray bunny one? Ah! <laughs> this one, oh gosh, I can't hold on to anything tonight, This the little gray bunny. Yeah, the Beatrix Potters are pretty cute too. I, I really I really like this. I'm gonna make some more of these because I have like um, oh let's see nine more of these canvas kind and I have a lot of these retro. I like those tops on these I think came out pretty nice. And this one is a little smirky butterfly. Hi Jody Lynn. Hi Cindy. What holds, right now I've got, uh, this is my phone that I'm using, 
and I've got one of those uh, clippy things. I have a, I have a, uh, what you call it, a review on one of them. That's what I'm using. And that was the. I finally put the Carolina Wren on there, and then I had the Be Kind tray, and right, the pineapple vase. Hi, Vala. So, because nobody could see my stuff last night, so I, I said I have to come on and, and show it like this before I go live. And I, I've been crafting all day, trying to fix all my... Everything was going wrong last night with most everything I was doing. It was ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I still haven't fixed my, my other bottle. I have to work on that tomorrow. I can only do so much. Hi, Sonia. How are you? Hey, Kazbat. So, easily distracted. Love the be kind. Yeah, I do too. It's cute. Um, how was everybody's day, Apple Snapple? I, I crafted most of the day. I had a Zoom chat while I, I crafted too, which was kind of rude. Um, but I did while I was Zooming. And I know that I've got probably a lot of email to look at. I did make I did make a Lori Vallow video, so I didn't just craft all day. I, and I made another video. I made two videos. I'm too hard on myself. Um, be, I, yeah, I, I love the Beatrix Potter. One was made um, with my napkin, and one was made with a combination of mine and... Lisa D's napkins. Where is Lisa D? Is she around? Hi, Sharon. Hi, just in case there's some. I got paint all over my hands. I'm going to go live on the other camera. I just, I mean, on the other computer. Their camera, but I just wanted to show you guys because you nothing ever shows up when I show it to you. Hi, Carol boys. Hi, Panda. Hi, Easily Distracted. Hi, Brandy. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Vivian. Um, hi, Ivy Lynn. How are you? This is, this is one of my favorites because it's like very retro and it really looks like a little canvas because I painted on top of it. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Hi, Donna. Hi, my crazy life. Um, I got paper mache eggs. They came six to a package at Michael's, and they were on sale. And I, That's what I got. These are paper mache eggs, six to a package. It was in the bulk. If you go to Michael's, they have the bulk. And then I also got these at Michael's. The, on, on online, not in the store, these are wood eggs. These are wood. I have got three of these. These these were per egg, but they were cheap. They were like a dollar fifty nine or something per egg. And then these were from Michaels. These were three to a pack, and they were like a dollar ninety nine or something like really incredibly cheap. Michaels just opened near you, and then this tray. You well, I got those at AC Moore, going out of business. Those were ninety nine cents. These I got at the Dollar Tree. You got like a pack of five for a dollar. This, these were 99 cents at AC Moore. I bought like three of them. They were going, they were going out of business. They're normally a dollar 99. And this, I bought the uh, bottle at the Vaz, actually at the Dollar Tree. Of course, a dollar. What else? The little canvases I got at AC Moore, there were five. I have five square and five rectangle, and they were like two something. But they're well worth it. I, I really like them so much. Hi, I missed you. You changed the visual on your screen. You almost changed your name to Mrs. Kravitz. Oh, then I wouldn't know you just in case. Or hi, Kazbat. Hi, Sonia. Hi, D90 Bell. So, 
So yeah, and this this was with a napkin I got at the Christmas tree shop. Uh, let's see, this this was a napkin I got at the Christmas tree shop. This was the Christmas tree shop. Um, these were Michaels. I got these online at Michaels. These were those ones from New Zealand. The decoupage papers. What else? Um, oh, these were the New Zealand ones. Let's see. This was a Christmas tree shop's napkin. And then these were TJ Maxx and Home Goods. Lisa D gave me one and I had one. So one is made with my napkin and one is made with a combination of our Beatrix Potter napkins. She got hers, I think, at TJ Maxx. I got mine at Home Goods. It was the same thing, essentially. Um, this is made from the New Zealand um, ones. Oh, and this is made from a Dollar Tree napkin. And it's a Dollar Tree uh, egg. And this is made with a, um, a Christmas, Christmas tree shop napkin. Hi, Jenny. So that's, I had only, that's why I had only this name since the beginning, but too many women think you're a flirty guy. <laughs> Hi, Sunflower Brown. Hi, Danielle C. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Tanya. Where did you get the eggs? The eggs I got at Michael's, if you go to the bulk buys, you can get six. I bought 12 of them. You can get six of them. They come in a six pack. And let me see, they, I'll show you what they look like. just come in a package like this there there are six in a package and they're four and a half inches I think and then the wooden eggs are like this and that that's this one here the rest of them are the paper mache eggs and they were cheap they were all cheap I mean, these were sold by the piece. I think they were like $1.59 each. And then I think the whole package of these, oh my gosh, was like um, 4 or $5 for six eggs. Plus there was like 20% coupon and other stuff going on. Yeah. Do you sell them? <laughs> Pilot Pete, no, I just... I just made them. I, I was having a time and a half last night. And um, so I crafted today to show myself, Carolyn, come on, you can do this. Uh, you're being ridiculous. Because all I made last night, all I managed to make last night was like this and the tray. Oh, and I made this egg, but I didn't finish it with the glitter and stuff. But uh, things were turning to crap fast with me last night. I think I started on this last night, too. Great way, yeah, easily, yeah, it was fun. It's fun, calming, you know, I mean, once you get the hang of it and once it's working, it's good. Thanks, Two Scooter. How are you recovering, Two Scooter, from your big job? Thanks again. You have to start all over? Why? What happened? Hi, Bobby Blue Eyes. You've never done decoupage? Well, you'll have to join the next time we do it. I don't know. I think we will probably have another craft night next next Friday or something. The Yeah, I like the bumblebee tray. It's cute, right? Yeah. 
my husband and I had a silly brainstorm game about, what'd you have? Hold on. Uh, about what you do with all the craft things, wish about what we do with all the craft things. <laughs> um, well, I mean, these I'll keep out for Easter and then I'll put away. So these will be just a seasonal. Something like this, I can keep out. I'd probably keep that just like to put, either to put out like that just on a display or, you know, I don't know, something. Probably just to display on something. And these are little, I don't know what I'll do with these. are more like decorations. I think they're pretty. Put them somewhere. What else? This is to hang on an Easter. I have my Easter tree. I got my Easter tree. I have it in the bucket. I've got to get it lit up. And I'm going to put the ribbons through these and hang this stuff on the, on the Easter tree. This will go on the Easter tree. This will probably get a little tiny little easel and go up on a windowsill or something where I can see it. Just, that's an Easter one, so that'll, that's seasonal. Um, this is seasonal too. I'll probably put like a little egg tree or something in there or, or lavender. I might put uh, fake lavender in there for the seasonal. Um, I didn't go woke up too late, but oh, your 5k. You woke up to, you didn't get to your 5k. Craft next Friday would be grand. Are you going to come on sunflower brown? Only two scooter did. <laughs> yeah, right. I think two scooters, it will never do that again. Um, love the Be Kind tray so much and Sweet Bunnies. Be Kind would be a good shirt. Yeah, it's cute, right? And the bunnies are cute. So... Jimmy's got something on about the royal family in there. I like the freak. I know Two Scooter likes that stuff. I like the glitter that I used. I just used like a white iridescent. I think it's a very fine white, and I like it. Yeah, Tanya, I like it too. The, the Beatrix powder, I love it. I'm so glad they came out good. I was so worried. I felt like I didn't have, I'll tell you what I felt like. I felt like everybody else, I know this sounds, everybody else, I felt like everybody else had the perfect napkin and the perfect item to put it on. And I, I feel like that's my downfall, that I have napkins and I have stuff to craft with, but it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't seem like it goes with the right object. Like, that was my problem. That's what I was feeling. But then as I looked at the stuff more and kind of got into it, uh, you know, I saw more options. Plus, I'm getting some stuff from Joann's, which I, I got some of those um, Tim Holtz, Holtz, yeah, H-O-L. They had a big sale, and I got, like, this map paper, which I want to do some of those trays with, and that little suitcase that I got. So I didn't want to go too crazy and do a lot of stuff because I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to want to use those papers and things. So we will definitely have another craft night um, probably this weekend because I if that stuff from Joann's, I'm going to check on it. It should be here this week. You wish you could find some? You can. Just go to TJ Maxx. Carol, yeah. I could send you out. Um, I have... A, I have um, what do I have, Carol? I have like this. Lisa's got, I'll show you. I got, I got these at um, Home Goods. And that's what I used on one of the eggs. And Lisa gave me these. Well, she didn't, you know, we swapped. I have about four of them or something. This is what I cut out. Um, you can see. This is what I cut out for one of, one of the eggs. But you can see how much you have with like one napkin. Look at all you still have. So, and these were, these were TJ Maxx. What does that say? Compare it $17. Would you ever, that now, usually I say sometimes these stories, uh, stories, 
Sometimes these stores don't put their, the, like Ollie's doesn't do it. Like Ollie's always underestimates the value. This is crazy, $17. Um, oh, I got some too. Did a TJ Maxx, I got some on sale, the ladybugs and stuff. But yeah, so I, I did, this is what I made those two eggs with, the Beatrix Potter ones, a combination of mine and the ones that uh, Lisa gave me. You need to find someone to help you with technology. What kind of technology help do you need? Hi, service dog, Alice. How are you? Olive, I'm sorry. I don't know why I called you Alice. You know, I saw another blogger. It made me feel so freaking good because she was in TJ Maxx and she was reading everything wrong, <laughs> saying everyone's name wrong. And she was, she was young. It wasn't like, you know, it was dementia or something. She was young. And she just kept, it was, it was just, I was like, oh my gosh, someone else that's doing that. 17 bucks is doubtful. Though we were looking on Amazon. Now, the other thing I want to get, there's this lady from Poland. And she uses this patina stuff. And when you put this patina stuff, it crackles the paint. And it looks so good. Then I found this other, and sh this other lady takes like spaghetti sauce jars. I mean, like just a plain old glass jar. And you should see what she does to those. It's amazing. A lot of these people are in other countries, but oh my gosh, it was so amazing. She'll put a little wooden knob on the lid and then she paints the whole thing, decoupages it. It's, a, it's amazing stuff. But I want to get that patina. J Bells and I were looking at that, and um, it gives it like a crackle. There's so many things you could do. What is an Easter gnome? A bunny gnome. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do the bunny gnomes. I'm going to do the sock bunnies. Someone calls them gnome bunnies without beards because their, their ears go down. And then I'm going to make some of the Easter bunny gnomes. You love doing patina? Oh, really? So does that make your paint crackle, Justin? Because this it gave a whole nother dimension to everything she made. It was so great. Hi, Dandy. Did you see my comment about the gnome bunny, Bobby? No. What did you say, Bobby? I saw someone else's. Hi, Dawn. What did you say? Can you say it again? Home Goods, TJ Maxx, they've got so much to pick for. Oh yeah, your own basket. Oh, uh. Hi, April, how are you? Our grocery stores have huge Easter gnomes. Oh, but they're overpriced? Yeah, you, this one at TJ Maxx was $29. It was freaking huge. It was so big. It was so big. The yellow, yeah, that's the, um, that's the Carolina Wren, and that's the Goldfinch. The Goldfinch side I had done, but I never, oopsie, sorry, Peter. I had never finished that, and I've just got to put the, um, the ribbon through there, and I've got to put the ribbon through the bunny. Thanks, Janelle. Um, so yeah, and then oh, that's good, Sakura. You've picked a name, Mommy Ramblings blog. Baby's name is going to be Oakland. What's that mean? Mommy, Mommy really. Oh, you're having a baby. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Hi, keep it kind, thanks. You just got back from Palm Springs. You don't feel like dealing with snow. It's gonna be warm for the next few days and then it's gonna get cold. Thanks, Mrs. Roger Rabbit. I was having severe difficulties last night. 
I had to redeem myself a little bit. Oh, good. Yeah, I am going to start getting all the decoupage stuff together. Um, it's been slow coming in, but just keep taking pictures of your stuff, and we'll put it in a... Um, your baby's at youth camp, the Brian clan. Hi, Prim Proper. Hi, Julie. Thank you. Does anyone else here make wreaths, apparently? Um, yeah, Mrs. Roger Rabbit makes wreaths. Uh, Mama Ames makes wreaths. Um, hi, Kathy from Texas. How are you? Is anything anything else come up on baby Evelyn? Because I haven't been watching the news or anything for the last couple of hours. Anything else? Other, they said they think that those people... No wrinkles on my crafts at all. Yeah, I, I tried hard. There, there might be a few wrinkles here and there, but I, I tried pretty hard. The larger bunny. This one is your favorite, Julie? Yeah, he's from, I'll show, he's from, I'll show you what he's made from. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Oh my gosh, remind me to tell you what Luke said. Hold on. Luke was watching me do, like Luke came up, you know, to get a snack and was watching me. See, it comes from this, this napkin. I got it in the cocktail size and I also got it in the larger size, but thankfully <coughs> now I now see why you need the cocktail size to the same price and I was like oh why don't I just get the bigger set but yeah it, it it works better on other things but Luke goes to me when I was making this one right <laughs> hold on I've got I just well <coughs> excuse me so he goes wow that's a napkin that looks like you painted that he goes that looks like something you'd buy in a store like the Dollar Tree <laughs> He says, like, the Dollar Tree. Um, and Jimmy's like, he doesn't... <laughs> he goes, the Dollar Tree. <laughs> Did you say... Yeah, I'll show you what I used. Um, for the napkins... I have a link to it in, I think I have a, li a link to it in one of my videos, but I use this one. It's the Americana, it's the napkin decoupage. The reward, the reward to finders going up, it's so sad. Also makes me sad that they are calling off Gannon search. Yeah, but I, I just laugh at Luke because it's, it's like the Dollar Tree. Um, okay, congratulations, Donna. So, yeah, that was, um, that was uh, pretty good. Best Saran ever is Kirkland, lasts forever, and never doubles back on you. Really? Yeah, I don't live near a Costco, unfortunately. Oh, who gave me a super chat? Oh, thank you, Vala. I didn't, thank you. That's very sweet of you. Thank you so much. Hi, Diane. So, yeah, I, I was having great difficulty last night. And that's why I think, like, it's like, when I get into something, I'm into it, and I just felt like, oh, my gosh, everybody must have been, like, bored to tears that wasn't crafting. That's why you've got to craft. Oh, that's sweet, Donna. That's great. 
you haven't kept up today with the missing kids. There's a missing boy. Listen, did you hear about this one, Carol Boyce, the one from Pennsylvania? Weird story that he went to school and he told his friends he was moving to New York City and they think he might be in New York City, but they don't say why or how or, or anything about it. Did you hear that one? 11 years old. Like he's just gonna go to New York City by himself, 11 years old. And I mean, that was it. That was the extent of the news news forecast on it. Not forecast, broadcast. No, somebody believed him. Yeah, well, he didn't come home from school apparently, or something. They haven't seen him. I heard it on tonight's news from New York. They said there's a, a missing boy. He's believed to be in New York City. Um, he's from Pennsylvania. I don't even know if they gave the town in Pennsylvania he was from. And they said that he was seen in school on Friday and he said that he was going to live in New York City and nobody's heard from him since. Your son would have tried something like that if he had known. What do you mean, going to New York City? Did someone else? Okay. If someone else gave a super chat, I don't know, I see something there and I don't, please don't think I'm not thanking you, but I can't see, it won't go to who it is. Hi, Deborah Kent. So, yeah, I, I don't know. That's just so weird. And that was the, that was the extent of the coverage on it, 11-year-old boy. I don't know, just in case, as we'll have to see. I don't think, no, absolutely not. I can't even imagine 11-year-old alone that's, that's never lived in the city, alone in the city like that. That's crazy. How can these mothers seemingly walk away from police interrogations? <laughs> I don't know. I guess, Kathy, that they're trying to make sure that they have enough on them. Hey, Bella Mac. Yeah, thanks. Um, before they... Before they, uh, what, what you call, um, lose the case entirely. Trying to read the chat. And what is going to happen with the Gannon case? I don't know. I have no idea, Bobby. Maybe they know. They probably know a lot more than they're setting, um, letting on. but I can't, I just can't believe they didn't even, like they flashed this picture up there. That's what they did. <laughs> they didn't say who reported him missing, what the mother's, you know, nothing. It's crazy. Why, what's the matter, Bobby Blue Eyes? Why are you so sad? Your brother ran away to London looking for our father. He was 10. Well, that was probably a long time ago, April, and I don't know where you lived. And It's not safe for an 11-year-old to be going into New York City alone. That's really it. I don't even... My kids could never... I'm, they would, they would, not be, it would not be possible for them to do that alone. They wouldn't even know where to begin.
it's not from there, never. Um, they had a crime lab out. What are the authorities saying about Gannon's stuff? I don't know. I can't believe Lori. Yeah, did you watch her in court? I have no idea, Apple Snapple. He's kind of young. I, I don't know. I, I just think it's so bizarre. Hi, Diana. How are you? What what's what are you sad about Bobby Blue Eyes? I missed it. What happened? I, I'm missing everything. Hi T praying. No one knows what they're doing. Law enforcement isn't divulging anything. Yeah, and I, I just I don't even go in the Facebook groups anymore. They're so infuriating. They're just too infuriating. I can't take it. For any of I don't go for any cases. I just can't. Oh, you're sad about Gannon? Yeah. Do you see picture orange is her new hula? Yeah, I put it up in my video. I think it's the la I think it's the the second to the last frame. I have her in the orange um, suit. You love Peter Rabbit? Yeah, they, I love them too. Too many cases at the moment, not good at all, no. You've watched the Amaya, oh yes, that, right, never, I know, the, that, that's never, that's, yeah, that's never been solved and probably never will be. Did you see how she looked back at her hubby? Yeah, yeah, and the way he's sitting in there. She's in jail. He didn't reduce the bail at all. They wanted the bail reduced at ten thousand dollars. Judge said no. It stays at five million. Yeah, Bella, you should have seen me last night. I had to do something to redeem myself. It was pitiful. I hit a wall when I heard about the Australian rugby player. Who, oh yeah. Yeah, that's horrible. I just I don't understand how that happened though. Did he jump in her car with a, a thing of gasoline? Um, let's see, Stephanie, I'll tell you what I did. Last night I had done this, like no one could see my stuff, but I added glitter. The only thing I did to this today was I added some glitter to the flowers and the butterflies. What else did I do last night? I had this almost done last night, but I did painting around it today, added some glitter, and then I painted the canvas um, gold here. Okay, what else did, did it, what did I do last night? Last night I had made this, this um, pineapple vase. Last night I made the blue egg, and last night, I made the bee, the bee tray, right? And then I started, then I had this mostly done last night, but I added the glitter today. It's got a little flowered butterfly. Um, and then I started this, I started this last night, but I put the glitter on, I put the gold, I did the gold here I did the gold inside. Um, let's see. I, let's see. What is that all? See, I didn't get much done last night. That's, that was my whole problem. And I was feeling really, I, I did this last night. But, oh, and I did this last night. But I, I put the gold on today. But that's all I got done last night. No, was that it? Yeah, that was it. And then to no no, I had started on I had started on this this egg last night, but only I only had this this one on. And then today, today I put the back the Cala, the Carolina Wren on the back. I had this one done for a while. Let's see, I finished this today. Finished this up today. I put the rest of these on today glittered them. 
what else did I do? Oh, I made the Peter Rabbits. I made these today. I had the eggs were painted. I but I had to I'd paint them again and stuff. But I made that. I made this one. And I made another one, yeah. I made this one today. That one. What else did I do? Is that? I think that's that's all I did today. Well, I mean for craft craft wise. That didn't sound good. That's all I did today. What did you say? Sorry, sorry, Stephanie. I saw something go on my slacker. Let me see. What did you say? You want to try drawing on something and then decoupaging it. Um, do I think it would work? I'm not sure what you mean. Drawing on, on what? What kind of stuff? Maybe, I, I don't know. It, it would have to be watertight, whatever you did. Oh, and I did this. I, did I tell you I did that last night? Um, look at the big bunny. Yeah, he's, so, he's cute, isn't he? Does the crafting help make you more relaxed? Yeah, it's relaxing. I mean, as long as it's going well. Was it like last night I was getting a little frustrated? Because it seemed like, it seemed like I didn't have, like I had all those napkins, but I didn't have the right napkins for each, like it just felt like, you know, I don't know. I just felt frustrated. And sometimes you have to walk away from something and come back. And then now I'm very happy, you know, with everything. You couldn't tell, Diana? Yeah, I was feeling a little frustrated because I, it felt like I didn't have the right napkins. And I'm like, how can I have all these napkins? And I have all these things to work on, but nothing is going. Like, I don't have the perfect napkin like everybody else seems to have there. Like, Barbara was just like, whew, 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 and stuff like it was perfect. Um, uh, who was it? Tamara made like that clipboard, you know, like, and I'm just like, why is that? And Diana was like going to town, said it was her first time. And she's like churning out stuff. And, and I'm just like, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was just crazy. So I was, I was feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> so not, not really. I mean, I was just frustrated. Oh, and Sassy Darcy, she's always like, you know, plowing through something. Barbara's a boss. But now, now I think sometimes it does. What did you say? Sometimes it doesn't vibe. Then boom, you're in. Yeah, that's, that was me last night. I was trying and then cab seven came on and he's saying all this stuff. And I just felt like that's when I took that bottle and it just like, I just like, oh yeah, you think this is good? Look, look what's happening. That bottle was a disaster. Yeah. Perfect napkins like me. <laughs> and then she scooter fell asleep. How long have I been decoupaging? <laughs> 48 hours. No. Um, what do you mean? Am I, I don't know. I mean, not long. I mean, I might have done it in the past on, on something with wallpaper or something. Oh, I decoupaged fabric on these chairs that came out really nice, but I haven't done it continuously and I've never done napkins except for just recently. You didn't fall asleep, okay. You know what to Scooter, I thought you said when your daughter came in and said, mom, what are you doing with the camera? I thought you were gonna say that your daughter was like, for crying out loud, I got changed in here or something. I didn't know what you were going to say when you said my daughter said, what is with your camera? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I didn't know what she was gonna say. I really thought she was gonna say that. Like my daughter was like, did you go to the bathroom and you left a camera? I came in here and got changed. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? And she wouldn't know. Oh my gosh, we could have such a disaster. Oh. <laughs> Do 
<laughs> but it was all about her daughter was saying she looked creepy. And I'm like, that was good compared to what I thought she was going to say. You want to do the, you need a laser printer to do the photos on wood. You would like to draw big paint, cute labels for seeds. Oh, yeah, I, you'll have to make sure that, um, you know, it's something that's water, that's waterproof, I, I think, unless you copy it, maybe, maybe, um, Renee Ney would be able to tell you better. See, Renee Ney had an off night too. Renee Ney had an off night too. No, not me. Two scooters said that. She, she got on and she goes, my daughter's going nuts. She said, mom, you have a camera or something and uh, parchment paper, rice paper. And I thought Two Scooter was going to say that her daughter was like, crap, mom, I just came in here and got changed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, she got Best Actress? Great. Congratulations, Two Scooter. I would have thought you would be in a really upbeat mood. Put that one next to Jimmy's blooper. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was, I, I was like, oh my gosh, is she gonna say that? Joanne's has single sheets of paper parchment too. Wouldn't that, I know, that would be terribly embarrassing. That's what, but she said, hi Peggy Sue, but she sounded, two scooters sounded mad. Like she goes, oh my gosh, my daughter. And I'm like, and she said something like, mom, with your camera. And I, what are you doing? <laughs> That's what I thought she was going to say next. Because I thought two scooter fell asleep or she went to the bathroom and she just left her phone there and the daughter came in and then I thought it was going to be much, much worse. Of course, you didn't see anything because you, I don't know what her daughter said. She looked creepy. I couldn't even see two scooter. I saw a black box. <laughs> but that was like really bizarro. You got a spotlight. I'm up. I'm dressed at two scooter. <laughs> I would be careful with parchment. I use it over top of picture patterns. The glue, yeah, I see. You want to make sure you find out the right thing, um, Stephanie, because otherwise it won't work. <laughs> she sounded creepy sometimes. She was trying to sound creepy, I think, at those times. I don't know, but her daughter wasn't saying she sounded creepy. She said that she looked creepy or something. She looked scary. Rice paper with Kim. I'm going to get some. I'm doing it my next craft night, and this time I'll be with the program. Yeah, I didn't know you were not in Slack, Stephanie. That's why I was so confused. I, I was terribly confused. I, let's see, April, that sounded like a wonderful garden. Oh, yeah, we all were. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't know, because you just kept saying you need a new invitation because you changed your name. And I just kept saying it, that wouldn't make a difference if you changed your name. You would still be able to log into Slack. That, that was, I didn't know that. I also didn't know Apple Snapple was not in Slack. So, yeah. Evelyn, I believe you're in there. You have to search your email for, just search for Slack and I get, but you probably have an invitation because I know I put you in there. I'll check it again later, but I know I put you in there, Evelyn. You'll get an invitation and you see, I can't send, I'll have to go in and see if I can re, but I, I couldn't resend it to other people. I like, they, it was, they had a look. I'll try. No, not yet, Apple Snapple. I haven't been, I've been crafting today. I really haven't been taking care of email at all. It's crazy. I'll check for you, Evelyn. I'll check. Um, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get you in there. I don't know if you're in Slack, keep it kind. Did you ever ask to be put in Slack? You can send me an email, keep it kind, and I can check for you. Just send me an email. <clears throat> send it to the uh, true crime chat, though. And uh, I watch crafting. Your items were lovely. Decoupaging is great fun. Love getting glue and gold leaf stuck everywhere. Yeah, I have bits of tiny napkin all over the place. It, it's messy. It's very, very messy. And I have to change before I can come on live because I have like stuff all over my clothes here like crazy. If you were in Slack, you'd know. But no, some of them got an invitation, Bella, and they just had never accepted it. They, did, they went, either went to spam or something. I got the feeling I was in... Yeah, I'll get to it. And I told you guys, oh, the other thing I did today, I read up again on um, Joan D'Alessandro's case again. So I know all the scoop on that. And uh, Rosemarie, I've got to get a hold of her tomorrow, hopefully, so I can do a run through with her about Zoom. And she's due to come on Tuesday at 10 p.m. So if you have any um, specific questions for Joan, Get them ready so that when she comes on, like you can ask them or you can send them to me. Like not now, don't bombard me like now because then it'll get lost. But like the night of or something or the day of. The day of or something like that. But uh, just to recap, you know, it was 1973. Um, I believe it was April 19th, Holy Thursday. And it's very similar in a lot of ways to Faye because they said that Joan was um, most likely murdered within like that first hour that she was missing. So they, the kids went to a Catholic school. Rosemary and her husband, Frank, had three kids at that time. And they were Frank, Frankie Jr., who was um, nine. And then she had a daughter that was eight. And then she had Joan that was seven. And it was Holy Thursday, so the kids were off because they went to a Catholic school. And... Joan had been playing outside in the front yard and she came flying in. The other two kids were at friends' houses and Rosemary was there and she said to her mother, you know, mommy, the, um, the man just pulled in and this science teacher lived like two houses up from them. He had a new, got a new car recently, so she noticed the car right away. And she said, Mommy, he, you know, we went there because they had been delivering all the Girl Scout cookies. She was delivering them with her sister. And they got everybody's cookies delivered except this teacher's. And so her sister was at a friend's house. So she said Joan, like, ran in and said, you know, Mommy, can I deliver these? He just got home, these last two boxes, please. And so the mother said, yes, okay, you know, um, and she grabbed her, the bag with the two boxes of cookies, and she, like, flew out the door, and literally um, less than, like, the mother didn't question when she didn't come back, like, right away, like, 10 minutes later, because she knew that she probably, the, the kids all played in the yards there, you know, it was 1973, that was what kids did then. And, but then when it was like an hour later and it was time for her sister's piano lesson, she started to get really worried, but she didn't want the kids to know she was worried. So she started to call around and nobody, nobody saw her. So then her husband got home from work and they called the police. And then Rosemary said, and, and in their neighborhood, they had an FBI agent and they had, um, Oh, there was somebody else she said that was very uh, was law enforcement or something or a, a judge. And 
so she walked up to that house. The husband looked around the, the uh, neighborhood with the kids first. He couldn't find her. And then when he came back, she said, I'm going to go out. I, I want to just see something. And so she brought her son, Frank, with her. And she went up to this James McGowan's house, the teacher, the, the science teacher, 27 years old. So he's close in age to the guy that murdered Faye. Never had any kind of, um, you know, criminal history or anything like that. He lived with his mother and his grandmother. He lived in the, ba like it was a bi-level, so the basement is like ground level. That's where his bedroom was. And she went to the door and he opened it and she said, she remembers he was holding like a slim cigar and he looked like he had just taken a shower. And she said, you know, did you see my daughter? She came here to bring the cookies. And he said, she never came here. She never brought the cookies. And she said, you know, yeah, she, you know, she was on her way here. She was, and she said she got a six sense because she was standing where Joan would have stand, stood and she said just this, the eerie feeling came over her and she knew, she knew he did something to her. And she said, instead of him standing there and talking to her, he started to go up the stairs and just looked at her with this scar in his hand. And, you know, he said, I, I didn't see her. I don't, I, I, I don't know. I don't know, you know, I, I don't know her. I, she wasn't here. She didn't come here. But then... The fire trucks came and um, they went out to the reservoir to look for Joan with every, all the neighbors, kids um, climbed on and she knew her life wasn't gonna be the same. And then he came out and started to help with the search, okay? So she told the police that she suspected him and they brought him in for questioning they gave him a polygraph and he failed the polygraph and then he confessed. When he failed the polygraph, he confessed and he told them where to find her body. And that was Easter Sunday. She said that the, um, I think it was the, I want to say it was the FBI agent that lived in her, on her street along with the, he brought a priest. And she said they came in and she knew what they were there for. So she tried to waste time, like um, taking a tablecloth off the table, like just doing things, you know, because she didn't want to hear it. And um, she said that he told her what he did and she said, I want to kill him. And she said, she didn't say it like in a rage. She said it very matter of factly. And she said, the priest told her not to talk that way. And um, then, you know, from that point on, the, the FBI agent that lived in their town, he went to identify the body so they didn't have to see her in that condition. And then the medical examiner knew that by the way she was and her, the way her body was on the rock and, and, and the way the blood pooled and all that, that she was um, murdered right, right after she went missing. So that, that's very much also like Faye Swetlick and um, just that, you know, Rosemary was saying everybody's like there for you I until the funeral and then the memorial service is over. And then, then that's when it really hits you. And, and a lot of people just are not there for you at that point. So then she, um, that you were asking about, people were asking about that law. Okay. Yes, that is that, that was, um, that's a national law now, Jones law. Um, it was signed by, let me see, first it was passed in New Jersey, but it couldn't be, grant, he couldn't be grandfathered into it. So she had to go every time 
Um, he was up for parole, and believe it or not, he was due to serve, um, he could get parole in 14 years, but they called her after eight years and said he was up for parole after eight years. And um, she had to keep fighting at him. When it was uh, 25 years after, that's when John Douglas, the killer across the table guy, the mind hunter guy, went up to interview this guy because they were asking, you know, could this guy ever be introduced back into society? You're in Missouri High 61. And um, so what he did, to, uh, what he did to her, apparently she came with the cookies and he didn't have the right change. So he called her, told her to come downstairs with him and she apparently hesitated and he actually like pulled her down the stairs with him into his room and he sexually assaulted her but that um is something like they don't know whether he himself oh gosh sorry guys i hit that he himself um was for better words inside of her or it was just his hands with his something on it if you get my drift here that's what he said he said he did not uh, penetrate her, but it, it, he did something to himself, had something on his hands, and then used his hands. But he assaulted her so violently that, um, you know, she had blood all over her underwear. And um, then he said that uh, what John Douglas said is that he assumes that, you know, this is this guy's first time doing something like this and what he said what the guy said is that oh my gosh I'm 27 years old I, I'll destroy my whole life so I've got to get rid of her I got to kill her and that's probably along the lines of what uh, I would think phase 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 murderer said probably so um he uh she fought back because Rose, Rosemary wanted to know that. They, and, and John Douglas said it, it sounds strange, but a lot of these parents want to know what, what exactly happened to their kids. And, and she wanted to know if uh, Joan fought back, and Joan did fight back. And um, so she, he pulled her off the bed, and she, I guess, started screaming or something, and, and he uh, strangled her, but... He said he, he said when he came back from the bathroom or from getting garbage bags or whatever the heck he was doing, he said he thought she was still alive. So he strangled her again. And John Douglas said, that sounds like a very um, inexperienced person that didn't know this. So he, he, so not, he not only strangled her again, he was like bashing her head on the, on the floor, okay? And then he, then he put her in garbage bags and then he wrapped her in um, an old couch cover and he put her in the trunk of his car in the garage, his new car, and he went back and he cleaned up. And then at some point he drove her out to Harriman State Park and put her in this um, crevice between two rocks out there he took off all the garbage bags he took off the sofa cushion he left her naked there and face up and he and he left her there and then he had all of her clothing in a mobile gas bag and including her shoes and everything and I, he had that like nearby i because they they found that but he took the bags and um, he, took, he took everything else there. And it's just, it's um, really horrific. So yeah, obviously he was, he was denied parole, but he tried to, um, he had an inheritance and there's also, 
he, he tried while in jail to like circumvent that from you know, just, just sleazy stuff he did after. And uh, Rosemary also said when she went in, because he pleaded guilty, so he just had to be sentenced, she wishes there was a trial so that all of the, um, the truth, that, that people would have heard more about what really happened to Joan. She wanted people to know what really happened to Joan because she said that when she went into the courthouse, she saw his mother for the first time. And she said his mother gave her like the coldest, meanest stare you've ever seen. And then Rosemary started to hear that his, his mother was going around saying that she hated Rosemary because if it wasn't for Rosemary, her son would not have done this and he would not be spending the rest of his life in jail. So, yeah, and then um, again, Joan uh, lobbied, uh, not Joan, Rosemary, you know, lobbied for Joan's Law, which is Joan's Law, any person 14 years or under who is murdered and sexually assaulted there is no way their killer will ever go up for parole. And so that law was, you know, New Jersey. And then, then it went, uh, it was signed nation, you know, wide by President Clinton at the time. I think it was President Clinton that signed it. So it is, yeah, it's, it's a national law across the country, Jones Law. And she's worked in the foundation and everything. So whatever questions... Um, you might have for her. There's also a couple of videos I have if you want to see pictures and stuff of, of Joan and and then oh and then she had um, she found out she had a neurological I can't remember what the name of it is. She actually felt it when she was 19. Something in her leg went numb, but then she was you know got married, had three kids and. After Joan died, she started to get affected by it, and a lot of um, doctors previously had told her, like, oh, it was postpartum depression, it was this, it was that. But she finally was diagnosed with what it was, and it's, you know, it's non-curable. It's some kind of a neuro, I think it's a muscular disease, but, you know, she can manage with it most days, and she still does. I mean, she's done everything, but she had two, she had a miscarriage, and then she had two boys in like, oh gosh, I think 1980 and 81. So seven years after Joan died, she had two boys. And those two boys are very, very involved in the foundation and with their mother. And she said that when she would fight for him to the killer, James McGowan, not to be paroled, her family told her to drop it and leave it alone and it's um that you're obsessed with this and and stuff like that that you should you know you keep seeing russian eggs oh there was stuff i decoupaged you know um and that she she should stop and she said it was her own you know her own family not telling her this so it was really hard and then um her husband and her actually ended up getting divorced probably back in, you know, after the kid, the, the two boys were born about when they were like nine or 10. Yeah, I know Kathy, right? So, and then she just, you know, went on and, and just made, you know, an admission, you know, for Joan, that she said she had a special relationship with Joan from that point, and uh, it's just, she's very inspiring. So, you know, if you have your questions for her, get them for her. Amy, no, I was showing what I made. I was showing what I made, and then I just started to talk about our guest that's coming. Sorry to confuse you. I'm I'm going to go on the other computer anyway. Fabergé eggs. <laughs>
that yeah 1973 Peggy yeah Tuesday at uh, 10 p.m. Tuesday night Kathy at 10 p.m. yeah so I, I I'm gonna try to get her to do you know make sure she can download everything and get in um, I'm gonna try tomorrow but yeah, if you have uh, questions, do some reading up on the case. Look at Joan's Law, and, and look, you'll see how she lobbied and how she had to go against a lot of things. Like, they didn't want her to put up another memorial. Um, like, the foundation was putting up a memorial in the town, and they said, oh, it was too depressing because it was right after you got off the uh, train. Joan D'Alessandro. Hi, I have a couple of videos on her. She, she has the Girl Scout uniform on, the Brownie Girl Scout uniform on. She was seven years old when she was murdered. Yeah, Peggy Sue, so, yeah, it's, um, yes, I have a sewing machine, Crystal. Hi, Mom. So, I'll probably sign off here because the battery's going to die and I will go. Hi, Matt. Thanks. I'll go on to the other computer for a little bit until 3.33. You get it now? You need to get a sewing machine? Sometimes you can find a good one on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. You sew? Good for you. But, uh, okay, let me just um, change my glitter shirt and I, I will go on and we can, uh, I'll come on the other machine. All right. All right, guys, I will see you over there in a few minutes. All right. This is not goodbye. It's just so long. I'll see you. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Let me try to take the phone out of the holder so I can... Come on.